is rolling. Oh, is it? Yeah, it has oh. been the whole time, yeah. Sweet. That, this, that's what you do, isn't it? You just press record and let us talk, and then in between all the pauses is when you zoom in on my face. Really yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Hi, guys. I'm Katie. I'm our content and social media manager here at Fanatical. Hi, my name's Matt. I'm one of the graphic designers here at Fanatical. Hi, I'm Dec, and I'm the social media and community executive at Fanatical. Hello there, my name is Mark, I'm the product administrator for Fanatical. Hi guys, I'm Fiona, I am the marketing executive at Fanatical. Hi, I'm John, I'm the head of engineering here at Fanatical. Hi guys, I'm Sam and I'm content manager for Fanatical. And these are my staff picks. So the game that I've got on my staff pick list is Rollercoast Tycoon. And on my staff pick list is Mortal Kombat 11 and my staff picks are Overcooked and Jackbox Party Pack 5. The games on my staff picks are Starbound and Dead Cells. Uh, two games I chose on my staff picks were Shadow of War and Borderlands The Handsome Collection. I chose those two games because they're very 2D-esque and over my lifetime I've always liked 2D games rather than a 3D perspective. Uh, the reason I chose Mortal Kombat 11 is because I really like the graphics on it. Uh, not just the fact that it's a newer game, so they're very sharp graphics, but also the gore and the detail it's involved as well. Um, so I chose Overcooked because it's really, really fun. It's got great single player mode, it's got great multiplayer mode. So I've played it single player, two player and four player and it is equally as fun as it is unbelievably frustrating. So the games I picked for my staff picks are Hitman 2 and Super Hot VR. I just love both mechanics of the games. With Hitman 2 you've got the open-endedness where anything can happen and it just does. I've had many an argument with my boyfriend over playing Overcooked because he, we were playing it once and there's two boats and they're going side by side and it just ended up being both of us throwing vegetables at each other for about five minutes before we're like, let's just quit and start again. And uh, it was very funny and we had our friends over and it was all a big laugh and everybody was just like, you guys are just so terrible at cooking. Uh, I chose Rollercoast Tycoon because um, when I was little it was like the game that I always played. It was kind of when I really got into PC gaming to start with, it was kind of like a, a nice easy intro game um, and there's just so much that you can do with it and it's just such great fun. I think my favourite part about the game was actually being able to build the roller coasters from scratch. Um, you could sort of, you can take ones that are pre-built but then you can also kind of build your own um, and get a bit more kind of crazy with them and kind of create your, your kind of theme park and, and grow it as it were. Super Hot VR, it's just so unique, like you, you move in with time, as soon as you stop, time stops and that just creates such an interesting mechanic game for the gameplay. I don't even know if I want to admit that like my favourite thing to do when playing the game was to basically build a roller coaster. Um, there's like one that has a loop and it goes up and then basically set the speed to 80 mile an hour and then take parts of the track off. <laughs> So that the roller coaster would fly for the end and most people would die. Um, or I'd fire them into a lake and drown most of them. Or if people complained about littering, I'd also drown them. Um, yeah, it was kind of less about building a theme park and more about drowning people. <laughs> there's tons of stuff in there actually. Like, there's like, um, you can play as like a crocodile and all sorts. There's just so many fun characters you can play. And it's such a fun multiplayer game to play with your friends even though you probably won't have any friends at the end of it because you're just like, someone boil the rice! And they're like, I'm boiling rice! And then the rice is on fire and then someone's got a fire extinguisher and it's all a bit chaotic, but it's lots of fun. Wow, I'm such a sadist. If I were to talk about each game I want to like most, Starbound in its own way is an adventure. It's very diverse and charming. You've got a wide range of uh, characters and uh, things you can do in the game that are very interesting and peculiar. You have like, you know, you can be a well, in the most recent update, you can be like a bounty hunter, or you can just cruise around space. You can land on the planet and dig down into the core, and uh, also space penguins. I like space penguins. I was a big fan of Dying Light when it first came out. Um, that was around 2015. Um, I loved the parkour element of it, where you could run around Haran, dodging zombies, kicking them in the face when you're diving through a window. Um, just the whole exploration part of it. But what I really like. Um, about Dying Light now is that the following expansion has just made it massive. I suppose my favourite part of Borderlands is the camaraderie really, getting together with some friends, playing it, lots of explosions, lots of guns. The reason I love Dead Cells is because it's fast paced, it's energetic, it's uh, very Dark Souls-esque if you don't mind me saying that because I know the internet hates when people say that. It's a challenge, especially with the Twitch integration. 
Like I do a lot of streaming in my own time and uh, occasionally I'll have someone who joins the stream, takes on the role of the small bird that assists you and they will assist you in each like way they can. Or they'll uh, take control of the boss and murder you. And you know, you can always be thankful of that. Blow people up, drown people, make them sick. Um, <laughs> add a bit of capitalism thrown in and make some money on it. Jobs are good. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, Hitman 2 is just an, a great game for kind of like, it's not start to finish, it's the journey in between of you've got to kill this target, okay, it never happens in the way you want it to. Even if you're not a big fan of survival horrors, um, you will still find stuff in there that you like. You probably just want to stick to the daytime. If you don't want to go out when it's, di uh, when it's dark, then just stay in. <laughs> um, but uh, I think as well that if you enjoy a good narrative, if you enjoy running zombies over, this is your game. Why should you play those games? You should play those games because if you want to have yourself an adventure, want to have yourself a challenge, you've got two great choices there to choose from. You've got one game where you can literally let your mind run wild, go on an adventure around the uh, universe and find many intricate things you weren't expecting to see in the game nowadays. If you want something a bit more challenging and a bit more straightforward, you want to go with Dead Cells because I can't think of anyone being the same. You might think you go in there with the, you know, the idea of just hitting them with a sword or a hammer, but then you might find yourself using a bow a lot more or some traps or gadgets. It's entirely up to you at the end of the day. So I chose Jackbox 5 because it's also a great multiplayer game. Um, we played it at, I think it was my friend's birthday party. There's a lot of fun, really fun party mini games in there that you can just sort of play with your friends and um, it's always a good laugh. No, I just really enjoyed the, the first and it was just a really nice extension of that. So, you know, if you've ever picked up our, our Shadow of Mordor bundle and played through that, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to move on to, really. With Super Hot VR, you have that single player where you sit, put the VR headset on, you're kind of just like in your own little world. That is such an important kind of thing in gaming where you get immersed and VR is a massive, massive potential for that. And Super Hot is one of the leading kind of games which offers something unique that really beats the non-VR version. It's a lot of fun to play with friends and it's really, they're really sort of inclusive games because there's a lot of running around so it's really fun to sort of coordinate with your friends like we've, we've, we'd have started a game and they're like right let's start the game again, you'll be on the rice, you'll be on the potatoes and I'll be on the chopping and it's like okay go and then you're just sort of all running around and it's very fun because it's very, everybody gets very very into it but very cross at the same time. And with Borderlands it's just it's good on your own, but better with friends if you can get a couple of people to play with you or even one other person. No, absolutely brilliant. I mean, Jackbox is just great anyway. It's a really good addition. I mean, if you've got one, two, three, and four, five is just hilarious. It's more hilarious than the other ones. I would definitely get it. If, you, if, you, if you're if you umming and ahhing about getting it, definitely get it just for the rap battle because it's amazing. It's just, it blew my mind. <laughs> Uh, Dead Cells, also have a story about that, Dead Cells was very um, stream integrated when I first played it. So everyone loved to jump in and like take over the bird or like, you know, make my life a living hell by playing the game as much as possible. They were like, uh, first person was like, you know what, yeah, I'll give them a bit of extra health. And I was like, fantastic, that's going to help us survive. The next person decided to make every enemy explode upon death and doors exploded and everything else exploded. And then I exploded. It wasn't fun. <laughs> Dude, yeah, we did this tournament and I was watching the stream live before my turn. And in between the matches, this guy was like on it and he was practicing and he was trying to find his best character and stuff like that. And I had a quick look online and I found one character and I looked up what his special move was. And when we got into the match with him, because I knew obviously looking at the tournament bracket that he was coming up, uh, I chose this one guy knowing who he would choose to see like who could counter him and I just spammed this one move at him. Um, yeah, and he wasn't happy about it. Um, I think the funniest story from Dying Light like, that I remember and I experienced personally was um, I was halfway between the safe zone and quite a big horde of zombies and the uh, sun went down. Um, everything got completely eerie. All the big glowing zombies came out and were basically hunting around looking for me. Actually spent 30 minutes of my own life behind a bin in a game. Behind a bin. Ridiculous. <laughs> didn't want to go outside, didn't want to get eaten, just left it. 
in their own way they're charming and fun and I'm sure whichever one you choose you're gonna have a great time don't get eaten because it doesn't work <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> survival 101 don't get eaten it's um yeah just don't get eaten and drive over zombies and if you're not sure put it in reverse drive over them again <laughs>